Hey guys, this video is for an Instagram follower who sent me this direct message. They asked me if I could show you how to make a title like this in Apple Motion. So that's what we're going to do today. I've kind of reversed engineered this effect and I'm gonna show you how to build something very similar in Apple Motion and publish it to Final Cut Pro. If you guys have requests like this, just hit me up on Instagram. I love hearing from you. And if I think I can do it, I will do my best. If you want my working files, join my Patreon community, help support my channel, and let's just dive right into it. Okay, let's start with a motion project in the project browser. Eventually, I'm gonna turn this into a Final Cut title, but for now, let's just make it a motion project. And I'm gonna change the duration of this project to six seconds, and the project is 4K at 24 frames per second. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is add my first line of text. In the inspector window, I'm going to scale this text up like so. I'm going to center the alignment. Under the Properties tab, let's reset these parameters, make sure it's nice and centered. Then I'm going to show my overlays. So I can grab this guide here and make sure that my text is perfectly centered on the screen. And under the Text tab, I'm just gonna change that baseline so the characters feel centered on that yellow line. All right, I'm gonna hide my overlays and I'm gonna draw my attention down here to the timeline. I want this text to be about 20 frames long. So with my playhead queued up to the top of the timeline, I'm going to hold down the shift key and arrow over once and then twice. That's going to get me to the 20 frame mark and I'm going to hit the O key to trim the length of that text to 20 frames. And now what I'm going to do is keyframe the tracking on this. So I'm gonna queue up my playhead to the beginning of that timeline. In the inspector window, under the text tab, under format, I'm going to make a keyframe here on tracking and I'm going to dial down that tracking to negative 100. So you can see that my text here is all just kind of clustered together. Now in the timeline, I'm gonna hold down shift and arrow over once to jump to the halfway point in my text. And I'm going to crank up the tracking. Sure, let's go to about 95. And then we're gonna hit shift and arrow one more time to go to the end of my text. And I'm going to dial down that tracking back to zero. Let me play that back. So you can see what happens. The characters are clustered together. They expand out and they come back together. But in our source material, you saw that the motion was really smooth and kind of exaggerated. I'm going to head on down to my keyframe editor. If you're not seeing the keyframe editor, make sure you hit this button at the top right of your timeline and you can see the lines between my keyframes are very linear. We're gonna change the interpolation of this center keyframe. So I'm just going to right click on it, select interpolation. We're gonna make this Bezier. And on these handles here, I'm going to right click on one of them and align the tangents. And then I'm going to grab each of them and move them side to side. So it's more of this bell curve. And there's that fun snapping motion we're looking for. All right, and also in the reference animation, there's this funny little diagonal blur at the beginning and end of each word as it animates. So what we're going to do is queue up our playhead to the beginning of the timeline again, select it on my text. I'm just gonna keyframe a filter on here. We're gonna go down to filters, blur, and we're going to select directional blur. I'm going to enable my overlays again. With the directional blur, you're gonna get these on-screen controls here. I'm gonna grab this little arrow and try to make that directional blur look similar to the reference image. It's sort of going at this diagonal angle. Uh, the amount here, I'm gonna make a 225 even instead of 225.4 here in my inspector window. And I'm going to add a keyframe on amount. And then I'm going to arrow over just two frames in my timeline. And I'm going to dial that amount down to zero. Let's jump to the end of our text and arrow back two frames. I'm going to make a hold keyframe in my inspector at the zero value and then arrow over two more frames. And we're going to dial this back up to 225. At this point, I just wanna make a bunch more copies of this text. So I'm just gonna right click and duplicate. I'm going to change what this next piece of text says. And then I'm gonna zoom in on my timeline and I'm going to align let me close my keyframe editor here so we can see better. I'm going to align my keyframes from the directional blur. And I'm just gonna do that a bunch of times. 
And at this point, I'm going to convert this entire project to a title. So we're going to head on up to file, convert project to title. I'm going to hit convert. And then we're going to go back up to file, save as, and I'm going to name list template Insta inspo title, and I'm going to save it to my Jen's title category. If you guys need more detailed information about publishing, thanks to Final Cut, I will link to a video down in the description where I go over this in much more detail. Let's hit the publish button. And now I wanna think about what parts of this text I want to be able to customize once I bring it to Final Cut Pro. I know that I wanna be able to change the font and the color of the text in the title inspector, as well as the contents of the text in the title inspector. You would be able to make all these modifications in the text inspector, but I wanna be able to access them in the title inspector in Final Cut just for convenience. So I'm going to grab this text here, this first word, and in the inspector window under the text tab under format, you've got this text box here. We're going to publish that. I also wanna be able to change the font as well in the reference animation, sometimes the font changed. So let's hit publish. And over in appearance, sometimes the color of the text change. I wanna be able to change that super easily in the title inspector as well. So I'm going to publish that color. And the other thing I think I wanna be able to adjust is the tracking in the title inspector because Maybe if you have like a longer word, you're worried that the tracking is going too far off the screen, or maybe you want it to go even further. So what we're going to do is set up a rig for this. So I'm going to queue up my playhead on my first piece of text here to the center keyframe we made on the tracking line. Remember this? And what I'm going to do is drop down here and select add to rig. Let's create a new rig. And the kind of rig I want is a slider. So looking at the widget tab in this inspector window, what we need to do is set the values of tracking we want for the bottom of the slider, the zero value, all the way up to the top of the slider here. You can see I've got this marker highlighted. I'm going to hit the start button with that first blue marker highlighted, and I'm going to dial down the tracking a little bit. So let's say here, now I'm going to hit stop rig edit mode and I'm going to jump to the next marker here at the end of my range, the hundred mark, and I'm going to hit start and I'm going to crank up this value really high, like how about there? And now I'm gonna hit stop rig edit mode. And so now if I queue up my playhead to that keyframe here in my timeline and I go back to that rig, I can use this slider to change my tracking as I see fit. And now in the project pane, I'm going to select that rig and under this slider line, we're going to publish that. So now if we select project in our project pane, I can see all of the parameters I've published and I can rename these parameters. So I'm gonna call this guy text one and there's my first group of published parameters. I'm gonna hit command S to save this. We're gonna hop on over to final cut and here is the title we just created. I'm going to drop it in my timeline. You can see in my title inspector that all the parameters I published are right here in my project. Let's head back over to motion and I'm going to publish those parameters for all of these text elements. Guys, while I'm publishing all of these parameters, if you like this video, if you feel like you're learning something, do that YouTube thing, give me that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. And then once you've published all of those parameters and created all of those rigs, you wanna head back over to the project layer in your project pane, and then the project tab in your inspector and change all of your sliders to the same value. So when you bring it into Final Cut, everything looks uniform. I'm gonna select a level of 10. Now let's save all of this and head back over to Final Cut Pro. In our title inspector, you can see that I can change each individual word. I can change the font of each individual word and the colors. Let's play it back. So there you go, that is our final look. Thank you so much to Art by Omar for the request. Like I said, if you guys see other things like this that you want me to try to reverse engineer, DM me on Instagram. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I picked out some other videos I know you're gonna love and I'll see you again.